Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, the Torrance Library offers you the chance to check out books without a library card thanks to a new project. Plus, synchronization is the key to this dance in water. We've got coverage of this spectacular event. Then a local pharmacy offering more than just prescriptions celebrates their customers with a special appreciation day. And the Torrance police are asking for your help in fighting crime with a new campaign. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Christy Wilcox. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks for joining us. Here are your top stories. If there's a particular route you normally take to work, you may have to find a different way to get around certain streets for the next few weeks. Now, this is due to the city's slurry seal project that works to repair worn-out roads in residential areas. Reporter Jennifer Hua tells us more. Loud early morning construction and rocky roads are things that some residents can expect for the next few weeks due to the city street maintenance efforts. I think the, the dust that is raised bothers me the most because I have a vehicle that I park on the street. But the disadvantages of dusty cars and a bumpy drive aren't the only things people can expect from the road work. Four different neighborhoods here in Torrance will be seeing signs just like these blocking off certain streets, preventing residents from parking in front of their homes. An estimated 5.3 million square feet of residential streets are going under construction until mid-September. The city project, known as the Slurry Seal Program, may sound like an inconvenience at the moment, but it's all part of a process to keep the streets in good condition. We resurface the streets to um, cover up any minor cracks and um, damage, just normal wear and tear that happens to residential streets over years of cars driving over them. The million dollar project uses a slurry and cape seal to treat the roads depending on the level of damage. A slurry seal is a layer of asphalt applied to deteriorated streets with minor impairments. But if a street has severe cracks, a cape seal or a second layer of gravel and asphalt is applied the following week. The amount of work seems drastic, but workers are doing what they can to make sure the roads are usable as soon as possible, especially before the busy school season. We understand that obviously parents need to pick up their kids from school and drop their kids off at school. Even under the current circumstances, some residents are able to look on the bright side. It doesn't matter, and they're doing a good job, and we'll have uh, nicer, nicer streets. These nicer streets means the city will look and feel better for everyone cruising by. This is just, like I said, a street maintenance effort to make sure that everyone, not just the residents, everyone who passes through Torrance has a good experience. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jennifer Hua. Thanks, Jennifer. The Slurry Seal Program is a project that takes place every year. In addition to repairing damaged roads, the city's parks will also be undergoing repairs in their parking lots. To find out which neighborhoods will be going through construction in the following weeks, visit torrentca.gov. A new water agreement designed to save nearly half a billion dollars is now in effect. The Water Replenishment District will now receive a dedicated amount of recycled water from the Los Angeles Sanitation District for use in groundwater recharge and seawater barrier projects. The recycled water is less expensive and more sustainable source than the imported water that's being purchased from the Metropolitan Water District. Thanks to this agreement, the city of Torrance and its water customers will benefit from reduced long-term price increases. A retirement facility in Torrance upgrades their building by incorporating a variety of brand new features for its residents. Reporter Jennifer Hua dropped by the Huntington Retirement Hotel to get all the details. <laughs> It's not every day that you see clowns walking around the Huntington Retirement Hotel here in Torrance. But as you can see, this day isn't just like any other. We have a petting zoo, face painting, um, cotton candy, food trucks. These activities were all a part of the facility's carnival event that gave residents an opportunity to step outdoors for some fresh air and fun. But the exciting festival was put together to celebrate a very special occasion. For the past five months, rooms here at the Huntington Hotel have been going through construction, but today residents and workers are celebrating the grand reopening. Well, the building was completely redone. They did uh, hardwood floors, crown molding, granite, uh, brand new refrigerators, brand new furniture. 
The building usually undergoes construction about every 10 to 14 years in order to provide a positive living experience for the seniors. In addition to the reconstruction of 30 out of the 98 units, common areas such as the chapel and pool room were also revamped so that residents could take pleasure in spending just as much time outside of their rooms. It's just a sense of community and inviting their families to be with them at their home, um, just, you know, to spend time and enjoy life. With these improvements to the facility, this grand reopening celebration was a moment for residents to show a sense of pride for where they live. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jennifer Hua. Thanks, Jennifer. The cost for the Huntington Hotel's remodeling project is estimated to be at least half a million dollars. Currently, two rooms are still in the process of being renovated, but more rooms will be going under construction as residents move in and out. For more information on the Huntington Hotel and its services, visit HuntingtonRetirement.com. Providence Little Company of Mary has a new chief nursing officer. And for Michael Jongsma, the medical center is familiar turf. In fact, he was born there. Jongsma has worked at Providence for nearly 15 years, first as an emergency medical technician until he received his degree in nursing. As chief nursing officer, Jongsma will head the 750 nurses at Providence. He already has a plan to earn Providence recognition as a magnet hospital from the American Nurses Credentialing Center, which recognizes quality patient care, nursing excellence, and innovations in professional nursing practice. Local businesses now have one more option when it comes to picking the right phone and internet service provider. Reporter Jennifer Hua was at the grand opening of Telepacific Communications to find out more. Communicating for local businesses in the city just got a little easier with the grand opening of Telepacific Communications. <laughs> Telepacific Communications was established in 2008 and is currently the third largest telecommunications carrier in California. After opening in different locations such as Los Angeles City and Irvine, the company decided they wanted to expand and Torrance happened to be the perfect spot. We tried to look for a good mid, midway point um, you know, to grow into, and we looked at the South Bay, and we realized there are fantastic businesses here that, um, uh, that we thought we could serve well. This new location in the city seeks to help business owners in any way they can by providing a number of different service options for its consumers. We have a lot of unique services ranging from, you know, uh, hosted PBX to data centers to, you know, voice and data services. Although their business competitors such as AT&T and Verizon may provide similar options, Telepacific adds a special touch to their services to show that they value all their customers. We answer our phones with a live body in 95% you know, uh, of the time and we have um, very, very customized um, care where we have texts that answer all your questions and all your needs um, up front instead of having to wait. And that's something that all business owners can appreciate. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jennifer Hua. Thanks, Jennifer. Telepacific Communications is the service provided to more than 40,000 businesses nationwide. For more information on the different services that are offered, visit telepacific.com. Swatting is a dangerous prank, and Senator Ted Lieu says the pranksters must be held financially responsible. Swatting is the criminal act of making a false 911 call that requires a SWAT team response. Swatters often impersonate celebrities or call police to the homes of public figures. Lou himself has been a victim of swatting, but the real cost is to the taxpayer, as a SWAT response drains police resources. The legislature passed the anti-swatting bill, and it's now on the way to the state capitol. If Governor Brown signs off on the bill, anyone convicted of swatting will be required to pay for the full cost of the police response, which generally, generally costs more than $10,000. Last week, we read a story referring to a bill regarding the proper shackling of incarcerated pregnant inmates. Unfortunately, we made a mistake in that the bill we referred to was a previous bill designated as AB 568 and not the current one by Al Muratsuchi, which was recently signed by Governor Brown. Muratsuchi's Assembly Bill 568 defines what a law enforcement officer is when using hearsay testimony in preliminary hearings. 
The mayor and city council members were back in session this week, and here's an update on the latest meeting. Mayor Scotto introduced the fourth phase of the Hometown Heroes Banner Program. The goal of the program is to recognize and honor Torrance residents and their family members currently serving in the armed forces in active duty or as veterans. The fourth phase adds 14 banners to the already existing 32 from the previous phases. The new banners will be displayed on Torrance Boulevard between Crenshaw and Sartori. The council adjourned the meeting in memory of John Parsons. Parsons, a former Redondo Beach council member and active member of his community for more than 25 years, Parsons served on a number of boards, committees, and associations, including Torrance's Redevelopment Agency. He passed away on August 22nd due to complications from a stroke. Parsons is survived by his wife, Marianne, and daughters, Nicole and Danielle. You can catch replays of this week's council meeting right here on City Cable 3 on Time Warner Cable or Verizon Fios Channel 31 every Wednesday and Thursday at 10 p.m. and Friday, Saturday and Sunday at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. You can also watch it online at torrentca.gov. Coming up, one man shares his story of survival from his battle with leukemia. Now he's giving back with the help of the Children's Hospital LA South Bay. And a new high school launches in Torrance with its own unique style of teaching. We'll tell you all about it. Think you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. If you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. Go to SpotSkinCancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. The Torrance Library is expanding, and thanks to a new program, you won't be seeing any construction with it. Reporter Haley Skeen has more on this new project. The Little Free Library Project is an effort to make books more accessible to everyone in Torrance. I'm taking this book home. I like it. Dude, I really want to read this Marley and Baby. Marissa Ybarra doesn't frequent the library, but the new spot at Pueblo Park makes it easy for her to pick up a page turner. Don't you have to have like a card and everything? So you can just grab it and leave. And making it easy to borrow a book is just what city librarian Hillary Thayer had in mind. We have 33 beautiful public parks and neighborhoods where people can't easily get to libraries. So let's put a little free library in a public park and see how that works. Thayer reached out to cultural services manager Eve Rappaport for help designing the spots. Rappaport found a local artist to incorporate the taste of the library spot's future patrons. So this is Michelle St. Marie and she worked with some of the neighborhood kids to do the stenciling and they put the roof on and she did all the painting. The Pueblo Park spot is the first little free library to open in Torrance and the rules are pretty simple. The way the Free Little Library works is really up to members of the community. You can drop off an old favorite and maybe even pick up a new one. And this concept of sharing a favorite book with your neighbors is something Councilman Kurt Wiedemann holds dear. Reading is very important to me. I've read all my life. I think it, there's a very special feeling when you're holding a book in your hand and you're cracking it open and you're sharing it. This little library is a pilot project, but we may see them popping up all over parks and torrents within the next year. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Haley Skeen. Thanks, Haley. You can check out the new library spot yourself, now located at Pueblo and Discovery Parks. For more information, visit torrentca.gov. An El Camino College counselor earns the Ford Freedom Unsung Award for her contribution to the community. After five years working at El Camino, Elaine Moore co-founded Project Success. For 26 years, the program has assisted inner city students in transitioning to college. Moore had a hands-on role in providing mentoring, tutoring, field trips, and even scholarships. Moore is now retired, but her work for the Multicultural Support Program still serves as a mo model for other California colleges. Torrance has a brand new private school with a unique style of teaching. Reporter Haley Skeen takes a look at what Ambassador High has to offer. Ambassador High kicked off its first week of classes with an unusual assignment, 
a camping trip in Sycamore Canyon. Junior Aaron Dowds is looking forward to bonding with his classmates. We're going out camping just to um, get to know each other better. Principal Michael Barker says the trip will actually get the students familiar with the style of teaching used in the classroom. It's a discussion-based school, much different than a traditional lecture school format, where every student is required to discuss the material in class. English teacher Jeff Silva says another great element of Ambassador's course design is that it gets students on the fast track to their college degree. We have LA Harbor College coming in and teaching two courses each semester. So students, if they follow that track and they take some AP classes, they'll have an AA degree and their high school diploma at the same time. It took seven years to turn the idea of a faith-based school in the South Bay into a reality. The LA Galaxy soccer team stepped up to provide the location, and their backing will also cut costs and tuition. Mayor Scotto says he's glad that Ambassador's founders chose to open the school in Torrance. Ambassador High School here is, uh, is going to be a school that we really believe will grow. And they have 25 students today, and you know someday they'll get it to 200 or more. The small number of students will allow teachers to meet the needs and talents of each individual. Dowds is excited to get involved with the music program. They talked to me about it when I came in. And I guess right on the spot they chose me to be the student leader for the worship. Another advantage to the smaller class sizes? Everybody gets a chance to play and nobody's stuck on the bench. Everybody's doing speech and debate, volleyball, and leadership. Everybody's involved in something. Student Mackie Lizzo says that she and her classmates had to go through a unique admissions process. You're kind of being interviewed for like a Miss America pageant. <laughs> like if you could do anything for a day, what would it be and who would you bring? But Principal Barker says the main goal is to make sure the ambassador is a good fit for all of its members. Choosing a school is very personal for the family and for the student. So it's got to be the right school. After they return from their camp out, students and faculty of Ambassador can look forward to a year of learning and growing together. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Haley Skeen. Thanks, Haley. Ambassador High is located in the LA Galaxy Building on Maple Avenue. For more information, visit ambassadorhighschool.org. Raul Gonzalez is taking action to help others not go through his same ordeal in fighting leukemia. And he's doing it one blood drive at a time. Reporter Faith Lee tells us more. Raul Gonzalez found out he had leukemia 14 years ago. The doctor told him he had three years to live. The only way of survival is through a bone marrow transplant. Unfortunately, more than likely you're going to need someone from your own ethnicity. But because you're Hispanic, your chance to find a match are very 7%. You have a better chance of winning the lottery than you do of finding a match. Luckily, he found a match within a year. 43-year-old male from St. Louis, Missouri saved my life, which is one of my best friends now. From then on, Gonzalez began hosting blood and bone marrow drives, hoping no one would go through what he did. Recently, he brought his blood recruiting team to the South Bay Children's Hospital. Children's Hospital treats not only all our cancer patients, but any trauma patients, anybody in the greater Los Angeles uh, area that has a need for blood. Every month, the Children's Hospital Los Angeles needs about 1,000 units of blood to support various services, including heart surgeries. Each surgery requires several units of blood because it's an open heart. We have to put the ch uh, surgery, we have to put the patients on a heart lung machine and in order to run the heart lung machine we need extra blood to be able to prime the machines. Although there's a shortage of blood across the board, certain blood types are more commonly used. The type that is most in demand is O. Uh, uh, type O. We also need type B too, but we definitely need a lot of O because O is very useful for many different situations. From a blood and bone marrow recipient to now a blood donor recruiter, Gonzalez said he's thankful for his donors and he hopes people, especially those with blood type O, will donate and save lives. You could be me and this could be one of your children that's going to need it. So don't be that person. Make a difference and donate now. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Faith Lee. Thanks, Faith. The Children's Hospital, LA South Bay, opened earlier this year and offers a variety of specialty services. If you want to help save lives by donating blood, visit chla.org or call area code 310-303-3890.
In addition to filling regular prescriptions, the unique Torrance Pharmacy offers, na offers natural solutions for health and wellness. Reporter Haley Skeen has a look at what this healing haven has to offer. It may be a compounding pharmacy, but Remedy Farm does a lot more than just fill prescriptions. In fact, customer Diana DiDomenico says her lifestyle relies on the natural solutions she gets from the farm. This is the place to come for someone who is uh, wanting to extend life, look good, feel good, and have a quality of life beyond uh, your peers. Di Domenico is one of the many customers who came to check out the free demos and products offered at the farm's Customer Appreciation Day. Assistant Manager Roxy Pritchard says the day of free services and deals was a great way to let loyal customers try out everything the farm has to offer. Mini Reiki treatments, intuitive healing, quantum reflex analysis. Lucia Gallant Johnson came to give free demos of Reiki, the popular Japanese stress relief treatment. We very gently place our hands on the stress points of the body to help our clients to totally relax. The farm offers these treatments in the wellness center, but it also has a wide variety of healthy products. Store manager Lauren Spiglanen says she takes pride in the farm's natural snacks. I personally taste every chip, every cracker, and every piece of chocolate before bringing it into the store. The farm has medical professionals on site to give customers individual nutritional and medical guidance. Our lead pharmacist specializes in bioidentical hormones, so women can come here and uh, meet with her. The knowledgeable staff is a big part of what makes this place so special for customers. How knowledgeable everyone is, the extensive array of products that they have here is bar none. Um, I can't find anything comparable to this. The day of free demos may be over, but Remedy Farm offers quality deals and unique services year-round. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Haley Skeen. Thanks, Haley. Remedy Farm is located on Hawthorne Boulevard between PCH and Lomita Boulevard. For more information, visit theremedyfarm.com. The Torrance Police Department is working hard to stop the increase of crime in the community, but they need your help. That's because crime in L.A. County has been on the rise since the onset of AB 109, also known as realignment, which gives low-level felons early release. The law was put into place after Governor Jerry Brown signed the bill in April of 2011 in an effort to prevent more overcrowding in prisons. I talked to the Torrance Police Department about their new campaign asking the public for help. Yeah. See something, say something. That's the name of the new campaign the Torrance Police Department started in order to help the community stay proactive in the fight against crime. It gave us an opportunity to talk to the public and actually educate them about what is occurring crime-wise in the city of Torrance and around the, uh, the Los Angeles County. The campaign started in response to the AB 109 or Realignment Act, which allows low-level felons early release. The law complies with a court-ordered mandate that was put into place to relieve the overcrowded state prisons. So authorities say there's a good reason to step forward. Yeah, there, there actually has been an increase in crime uh, L.A. countywide. Uh, the city of Torrance uh, has had an increase, a very minimal increase. That's why they've launched this new campaign asking you to keep an eye out. Residential and commercial buildings are primary targets. That's because the punishment on smaller offenses is minimal, which some say has essentially created a revolving door for criminals. I just think that um, giving people early release is like giving them a slap in the back and just saying, hey, get out. You didn't really do it. The department says almost 70 percent of crimes committed in Torrance are by offenders who live outside the community. An AB 109 task force is on the lookout since ex-inmates don't have supervision once released. The Torrance Police Department is very active in looking, at, looking out or trying to combat uh, residential burglaries or commercial burglaries. But the way we're finding these people is by people identifying or seeing this and calling the Torrance Police Department. Sergeant Rusin told me that they are out in the community doing compliance checks two to three times a week with individuals who have been released. For more information on the campaign and how you can help prevent crime, go online to safeandsecuretorrents.com. Coming up after the break, once they were performers, now they're instructors for the annual Aquacade. We'll tell you all about it when we come back.
I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months, and now we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. Wildfires were getting dangerously close to homes. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. The annual synchronized swimming show, Aquacade, is back again for another amazing performance this summer at The Plunge. Reporter Faith Lee tells us more. Jackie Smith and Sarah Ritchie performed at the Aquacade when they were seven years old. Sixteen years later, they're on the other side of the synchronized swimming show. We were both a part of it when we were kids, yeah. and then <laughs> we became coaches, so it's been a, it's been a long road for us. <laughs> The coaches led a group of 38 girls aged 8 to 16 at this year's specially themed show. This year's Aquacate's theme is Are We There Yet? where swimmers are depicted on an adventure across America. It's like a road trip, so it's just kind of like it's going to go across the country with songs and then it just ends in Florida. So it starts in California, across the whole country, songs from all over. One of the special things about this year's show is the audience. We have so many seniors and adults here. Some kids, but the majority of the people here are seniors and adults because they're like, we just really want to see what this is all about. They want to see what this is all about because Torrance is one of the few cities in SoCal that still has a synchronized swim team. So this is kind of like one of those rare programs that is still funded and still such an experience for the city and the kids. It's wonderful. The Aquacade is also an experience for the parents as well. Karen Curl's daughter is performing for the first time at the show and she thinks this is a great sport for her daughter. My daughter loves to swim and she loves to perform um, and I think the, the sport itself is, is, uh, is challenging but it's also rewarding. At the end of the day, it is an accomplishment for both the performing girls and the coaches. These coaches bond with these young girls and they are so excited to see them perform. They're like parents, just pure pride that their kids are out there doing that. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Faith Lee. Thanks, Faith. Girls from 8 to 17 are invited to join the synchronized swim team. All you need is the passion for music and dance, and it helps also to know how to swim. For more information, go to torrentca.gov and search for aquatic classes. Well, that's going to do it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Christy Wilcox. If you've missed any portion of our show, you can catch us again at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook, where you can see some of the behind-the-scenes action at facebook.com slash TV. Speaking of which, I'd like to announce the winner of this week's Facebook fan, Gene Adelsman, is the lucky winner of a portable mini-speaker courtesy of City Cable. Congratulations, Gene. You can pick up your prize at our office located at 3350 Civic Center Drive Suite 200 and keep those likes coming as we'll be giving away another prize next week. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.